Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our first um, breakout session. Uh, title It's All About People, and I guess that title was chosen because our five speakers are coming from universities, and universities, among other things, are creating the people, or helping to create the people that are building this new reality, which is geodesign. My name is Michael Gould, and I'm an education manager at Esri, so I know uh, most of my speakers um, as uh, uh, customers, users, collaborators at different universities. We have two university speakers from California, and we have three from Europe, so a bit of a cross-section geographically. And the nature of these quote-unquote lightning talks is that they're effective if people know how to give lightning talks. So I'll please ask the speakers not to give your 30-minute talk if, it, if you only have 12 minutes or 8 minutes. So if you can just basically get the thesis out there, hopefully we'll have some minutes left over at the end for some discussion. So please get right to the thesis, not too much introduction, and I won't do any more introduction, and I'll get our first speaker up here right away, John Wilson from University of Southern California. And his title is Towards Geodesign, uh, Building New Education Program uh, and Audiences. Thank you, John. Take it away. Uh, I should mention that any, anything that we say regarding question and answers, everything must go through the microphone because it's being recorded. Thank you. So it's a pleasure to be here. And, and the title of the session is apt for me because I think the people is relevant in two ways. One, I'm an educator and so I'm in the business of training people. And then second, I, I think the big challenge in geodesign is how to engage a, a large cross-section of people and to keep them engaged from start to finish. So what I'll do is uh, I'll start with some guiding principles and then I'll go to six projects and then one slide about education opportunities and I'll be done. It's my first lightning talk, so if I mess up, uh, put it down to my own experience. So uh, I think of geodesign as these five things. There's a spatial, uh, focus on spatial thinking. And so I come at it thinking of a sp spatial sciences base. It leverages geospatial technologies. It has for a long time. Uh, it, there's a focus on the future. Uh, in my mind, there's a focus on design as a force for good and a precursor to action. So it's no use uh, or just designing things and talking about designing things. You actually have to have a, enough clout to get something done. And the really important piece is this piece about collaboration. It's multidisciplinary, but it involves stakeholders and the general public. And the second point I'd like to make is that we stand at, at this moment at a special time, and that largely has to do with the role that the web does and, and could play in the future. And so the, uh, Goodchild in 2010 wrote an article, and, and he, he contrasted small d and large d design. Uh, I, I imagine he likes the small d design the most, uh, that it's a simple optimization problem. Uh, and this was his characterization of the large d uh, design. And uh, he concluded by noting that it was messy. And the tone of the article seemed to be that this was a problem. And uh, I think the opposite is true, that that's the opportunity. And then the, this is Carl's work, and it's uh, going to be presented many times, I'm sure. And the key thing here is twofold. One, there's a couple of different kinds of people here, uh, two or three. The, there's the conductors and the soloists, and they may all be experts. And then there's uh, often the, these people of the place. And I don't think they maybe are emphasized enough. And then there are both simple and complicated models, I guess, that could be uh, at work there. And from his book, two things that come out is that there are drivers of change in a way. One has to do with political attitudes and participatory government, and the other that the role of information technologies could play. And this is a further reason why we might be at a special place. Uh, another thing that's special is that uh, when you think of things at a very small scale and you try to extrapolate them to a big scale or you work backwards, uh, I don't think that, that everything's necessarily going to work as we imagine. And so uh, it's important to think about how different scales nest in one another and how you aggregate up from small scale to big scale and so on. And uh, this is my main thesis, I guess, and the, the, the web is uh, ever-present, it's ubiquitous. And uh, it's a special opportunity because it provides sensors, all sorts of new information. Many times that information is particular to, to a specific person or a specific place or a bird or some other creature. And uh, it provides uh, as well a chance to collect then volunteer geographic information in one way or another. And uh, obviously it involves the op provides the opportunity to connect in ways that were hitherto difficult uh, through various forms of social media. And uh, GIS and the, and the spatial technologies are not uh, immersive, are not 
separate from that. And so th there are all sorts of consequences from that web base uh, for what's happening with GIS and related technologies. And, and in the co geo design context, almost all of the outcomes uh, are favourable, meaning that there are more things we could do and we could do better uh, today than we could five or ten years ago. And that was obvious from the first keynote this morning. So I'm just going to show you six plans and uh, and make a brief comment about them. And uh, Los Angeles sort of as a city grew up in the early part of the 20th century. And in 1930, as a part of a way to promote the city, the Chamber of Commerce uh, contracted with two famous uh, landscape architects to provide a plan for the whole city. And uh, as soon as they saw a draft of the plan, the Chamber of Commerce did a U-turn and, and did all they, all they could then to uh, make sure the plan was never implemented thereafter, hence a city of, uh, of freeways and no parks. Uh, but there were spatial technologies, there was pen and paper and maps produced, uh, it was f looking at the future, uh, it was design uh, and so on, but there wasn't very good collaboration. Uh, here, here's a project that we did at U U University of Southern California, Reality Check LA. We got 250 policymakers, politicians, planners, uh, architects and, and some members of the general public together for a day. They played a game on top of a series of maps on tables and when they all went to lunch, uh, my team put together a, a spatial analysis of what happened at 22 different tables uh, and then we had uh, a famous uh, national public radio person in the audience all afternoon asking groups what they did while I provided a commentary about how similar their action or plans were to what other groups were. Uh, not a very good example of geodesign because it doesn't necessarily lead to any action. It was just a fun day, uh, sort of a lot of a lot of discussion and not much else. And here's a, a geovisions uh, plan that we built for a, a, some regional conservancies. They were interested in improving the science base of proposals that were sent to them for funding. And so we prepared some tools uh, built on top of ARC IMS. Uh, we spent five years building the tools. They used them for two years. Uh, then there was the great economic downturn, so they lost their funding. And worse, the real killer was, of course, the technology evolved very fast. And so ARC IMS is sort of a dinosaur. And you'd have to start the project again in order to implement the tools today. So they're not very good examples of geodesign, but they precede sort of our, our recent interest. Uh, three better examples would be the Trust for Public Land. They have this green printing service. Uh, this is how they, they sell it. It produces uh, plans and, and proposals for how to modify or sustain various kinds of places within a community or a county or something. Uh, and and there is a part of their, their process is to have a strategy exchange week where a group of stakeholders and experts go on a tour for a week looking at various possibilities and options and constraints. Uh, but it's it's focused on a particular set of outcomes and it, uh, it involves the people but not perhaps in as direct a way as necessary. Uh, a second example is from the University of Southern California, Santa Barbara. Uh, they've built a, a set of tools on top of uh, ArcGIS Online called C-Sketch and they have some previous tools and, and this enables a broad participation in uh, spatial marine planning. And the good thing here is that th this, is a, this is a platform to facilitate uh, geodesign projects and, and I think this is an example of the kinds of tools uh, that we might want to build and explore in the future. And then the final one is my favourite. Uh, there's a project for public spaces that's uh, been, been around for 20, 30 years. They've done projects, I think, in almost all US states, 40 plus countries. Uh, they have a, have a particular template that's built on, on sort of the t typical data that a GIS person would use, but all the other things as well that people would find important about places they like or don't like. And uh, their focus is very much on the people. Uh, and so this, in my mind, is sort of a small, a small area uh, geodesign at its best. And, and the real challenge then is how to keep the people involved and be able to scale up so that you could look at uh, larger than local problems and uh, regional and national and international problems. And their guiding principles are all these things here. Uh, and, and they have many, many projects that they've completed over the years that seem to uh, uh, belie that. At USC, we've built a Bachelor's of Science in Geodesign. It's a collaboration of three different schools. Uh, it involves fieldwork and studios, teamwork and collaboration. We work with real clients, real projects. 
and we have very much uh, a mind that we're focused on placemaking, and our program is messy by design. And I think uh, I think messy here is is the attribute that you want to succeed with. And we see it as a stepping stone to other graduate degrees, and we have a mind that we could start the process of training both conductors and soloists. Uh, and this little diagram over here just shows that the three schools, in this case, architecture, planning, and, and the College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences, my, my institute, are uh, equal partners in this degree. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you. Excellent, Excellent lightning talk. You finished before your time. Um, that means we've got a few mi minutes for questions or comments. Questions regarding the new degree in geo design or the projects that were mentioned? John, do you know anybody else who's now running or beginning undergraduate programs? Uh, John, John, do you know anybody else in the world who's beginning undergraduate programs? Uh, I think I, uh, as of this morning, I know two. I think uh, there's a team at uh, ITC that have uh, got a got a new undergraduate program on geomedia and design, and I think Paul Schwartz in, in Florida uh, is yeah, busy busy trying to create an undergraduate program. And, and Ritsumeikan University in Kyoto, Japan, coming out of geography, is starting. And and Ritsumeikan in Japan, uh, c uh, coming out of geography. So when I first proposed this idea, Carl, Carl was in the audience, and I think initially the idea wasn't too attractive. But and one of the reasons I was attracted to the idea is is how you think about training a new generation of students. And so in the United States, we struggle to bring students to the spatial sciences. There's not a very large geography or spatial tradition in, in grade school and high school. And so I saw geodesign as a way to, to bring new students, uh, bright new students, to the spatial sciences uh, to provide this broad base. And I imagine to be really useful and impactful in the world that they would go to a graduate degree in landscape architecture or a graduate degree in GIS and T or a graduate degree in environmental science or a graduate degree in planning or some other field. Uh, and so I simply took sort of the notion that was cast in Carl's book and in many of his talks and turned it upside down. Uh, and uh, it's, it's played very well for me at USC. I got from idea to uh, curriculum proposal approved in about five months. Uh, we just uh, started the degree a month ago. We, we have a capped enrollment, so we, we can't advertise degrees, but we can advertise uh, special opportunities. So we plan to bring a geodesign class to Amsterdam for a three-week uh, field course uh, next summer. And the whole idea, part of the idea there is I can advertise that a, a, as an entry to a degree. And having started that advertising process, we've already recruited our first six majors to our new program. So that, that part's been uh, quite, quite rewarding. Thank you. Thank you again, John.